Okay, so welcome to the training room here at the Ingenious Hair Company. Purpose of this very short video is just to give you a brief overview on how to design a high velocity small duct system. Um, we do show people on a one-on-one. -on -one. We do have a, a design assistance manual that we can send out. Um, click on the link at the end of the video, gives you details and we'll send you that information. Um, but we thought it would be an idea just to give a brief overview here so we can see how simple it really is. So the number one thing is work out what you need. Um, do your heat loss calculations, do your heat load calculations. Um, people ask us, well, well, how do I design the calculations for working with a high velocity system? Well, it's the same as any other system. So the heating you need is the heating you need, and the cooling you need is the cooling you need. So you work out in, in whatever way you normally do. So now we know how many kilowatts you need for this project. Second thing is, what, what's our source? What's our heating and cooling source? So the high velocity system is a delivery source. What's the, uh, what's the source of the, um, the heating and cooling? Are we working with a boiler? Are we working with an air conditioning heat pump? That's quite often the case. Maybe it's a heat pump chiller, maybe it's a ground source heat pump, or a water heat pump and so on. So by knowing that, we know what duty we're going to get from the high velocity system. So for example, in, in the design manual, it, it's going to tell us what duty we'll get from each unit. Depending on the water temperature, for example, of the boiler, the higher the water temperature and flow, the more duty we're going to get from it. Or what our cooling is, based on um, standard DX evaporating temperatures. So, what's the source? The third thing is, how many systems? So now we know how many kilowatts we need. We know what the source of the heating and cooling medium is. So we'll know from that, through the design guide, how many high velocity systems you need. So, for example, if you are looking for um, a 10 kilowatt system, let's call it a small one, we can work on a, an air conditioning heat pump that's going to give us 10 kilowatts of cooling, 10 kilowatts heating, around about 8 kilowatts of heating when it's minus 5 outside. So maybe we're topping it up, maybe we're looking down at a 14 kilowatt heat pump to offset that loss. Or perhaps it's heating only and the same high velocity system is actually going to deliver or be capable of delivering 16 kilowatts at a water supply temperature of 66 degrees centigrade and so on. So we can work at how many units you need. Then how many outlets per area, so the individual areas to be treated, how many outlets for each area. Well because we now know how many kilowatts we're going to get off each system and how many systems we have, we know how many outlets we're going to use. How do we work that out? Well, we know, for example, from experience that if we're putting, let's say, a 14 kilowatt, a, a common size 14 kilowatt system in a residential application, we're going to use about 25 of our HE size outlets. That's going to give our, our airflow and our sound levels quite a nice base level. So it's a very good starting point for a quotation. We tend not to deviate too much from that figure. Um, however, if it's only heating only and we've got a hot water, we're getting, we're getting more heat out of each outlet. We don't need so many than maybe we do if we're using an air conditioning heat pump, which is giving us cooling as well. Okay, so we can work out how many outlets per area. Once we know how many outlets we need in each area and how many high velocity air handling units we've got, we can then go ahead and design the duct plenum. You might see this behind me, you can see the supply plenum coming off the air handling unit. So that's going to travel to the treated areas and from that we have our small uh, mini ducts which are going to travel to the ceiling or the floor and, and you'll have the terminus right there. So the air has been delivered, floor, ceiling, from a bulkhead and so on. So we're going to go ahead and do a real live uh, design. I've got a couple of drawings here. They happen to be from a commercial application. Uh, nice wide area, just made, makes sense, more easy to see what we're doing. Uh, one of the drawings already has a standard type system uh, on there and the other one's blank and we're going to design a high velocity system. So come and look over my shoulder and we're going to do this next. So, we know how many kilowatts of heating and cooling we need because we've worked that out. We know how many um, high velocity systems we need based on the kilowatts required. We know how many outlets we're going to use based on our rule of thumbs of 14 to 20 kilowatt system is going to have 25 and so on. Um, so we're ready, to, uh, we're ready to design. Now there's a lot of flexibility in, in the design uh, and sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. Sometimes people want sort of tighter cons uh, constraints. Um, but really flexibility is your friend here. So we're just going to plot uh, very quickly uh, a system here. And then we're going to look at a conventional system on a real life project 
and we're going to map on it on the same drawing then we're going to map on what the high velocity would have looked like. We're just using two colours uh, because these are the two colours that come out best on the video. So for this application we're matching up on a 20 kilowatt uh, ducted fan cut. So we're going to use the same thing here. So we're going to work like this. We're going to go in red. Here's your air handling unit. Dimensions are all in the book. And depending on the different modules you're going to use, it'll be slightly different sizes, obviously. Um, if this had every single module available to it, including the air purification, it would be in horizontal mode. It would be 1800mm um, long by 750 wide by 500 deep. Okay? Uh, there's other uh, orientations as well. You can see the one we have here is, is partly vertical. Okay, so let's get on with this. There's your air handling unit above the ceiling. Now, the duct coming off of this one is 250 mil. It's not about 250 mil, or let's work it out. It is 250 mil. That's it. Okay, it's a uh, it's a static regain system, and we've got a couple of lovely videos about static regain, um, which you'll find in the same section. So there's our 250 mil duct. Now, T's and elbows. A couple of things to bear in mind. If we put a branch on here. Okay, on a branch T, maximum 30% of the air outlets, not 30% of the length of duct, 30% of the air outlets. If we go into a T up here, then we want 50 50, 60 40 is fine as well, but as near to 50 50 as we possibly can. Again, we're talking about 50% of the air outlets at this point. Okay. So you've already taken some of the air outlets, so let's say we start off with 25, we've got 5 coming here, we've got 20 left. So we want 10 and 10 as near as possible. Again, this length of plenum duct might be longer than this length, that's not a concern of ours here. Okay, so the system pressurizes, and then all along that system, we're going to have the same pressure. Now, the mini ducts will connect on, and again, for exact connections, just to see the installation manual, there's a couple of rules about how close we can connect them. But by and large, we're just talking about design here, okay, rather than the installation. And here we go. So here, here's our here's our mini ducts coming off of here. Here we got it, okay. And we're just each one of these is a three meter length. It can be extended, but we're going to use a three meter length. We don't want it pulled taut. So if you have three meters here, then maybe you want to consider moving over to where we want the outlets to be. Then maybe we want to consider moving the air handling unit over this way, or we can extend them, but we don't want them taut, okay? We want a nice sweeping bend in the mini duct to give the sound attenuation properties of the duct, give them a chance to work. So that's, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's very straightforward, and it's very simple. Here we would have a return air duct coming into the rear of the unit, and again, we have a lot of, a lot of flexibility with the return air because of the induction principles going on inside the conditioned space. So here's the conditioned space, and we've got nice even temperatures everywhere. So the return air grill is a lot less a lot less of a concern for us. Okay. Now when we're designing these outlets we would like no part of the room to be more than say four meters from an outlet. That's that's a really that's a really lovely uh, a lovely design. Okay. So nice and neat. Um, if you if you need to get over to the other side we can just simply continue this on, drop it down and have outlets coming off of here. Okay? So like I say, very flexible, very easy to work with. Um, velocities in the duct are not a big concern for us. Uh, they don't cause, sound, cause a sound issue. And they don't have the same um, relationship to air delivery that you get with a normal fan call that we're going to look at in a moment. So the static regain is such that it's going to equalize the pressure throughout the plenum. And then the air will come out through the mini ducts. Okay, so we're just going to move over to this drawing. Um, we're going to cut the video here so we can move the camera and move on to a proper example. Okay, so now we're going to bring that theoretical design over here onto an actual design. Um, this particular standard fan coil is from a commercial application, actually it's retail, uh, but it's quite a good example of the differences between maybe what you're used to and how much easier it is with a, uh, with a uh, high velocity system. Okay, so here we can see the duct. Coming off the fan coil, which is just positioned down here below the page of the drawing, uh, here's our airflow. Uh, we've already dropped at this point, and we're at 932 by 203 mil rectangular duct. 
take a couple of outlets off, and we drop to 775 by 203. A couple more off, we drop to 598, 547, 309. Okay, and you know that getting those dimensions is quite critical. We want to keep that, you've got to keep that velocity up into duct, so you've got to drop down um, just the right amount. But you've also then got the VCDs in the branch ducts, so that when this is all said and done, you've then got to go back and do um, quite a bit of commissioning. In this case, they're all feeding into this single linear linear bar grill in the ceiling here. Okay, so how would this look like for an actual high velocity system? Well, again, we're going to just put the fan coil here, and I'm doing a little bit of freehand because it, it works better uh, on the video than blocking it with the, the ruler all the time. Okay, so that's our air handling unit in the horizontal uh, plane above the false ceiling. Dimensions wise, it's going to be 1800 mil if, if we use the air purification and the return air box and so on and so forth, uh, by about 750 mil wide, by about 500 mil deep. Um, there's different orientations available. We can make it all vertical or we can make it partly horizontal or partly vertical, just depending on what the uh, site limitations are. Okay, so here's your, your uh, high velocity air handling unit. Now, a duct coming from there, okay? This I will use the, uh, the ruler for. And here we go. That's it. One side stuck all the way. In this case, it's not exactly centre, but in this case, it's 250mm plus insulation. If you want to make a rectangle, absolutely no problem. Just the same cross sectional area as 250 circular. It can be triangular. We, we don't care what the, the shape is. We're a lot less worried here about uh, drag with increased. Um, uh, perimeter surface area and so on because it's a static degree game we're pressurizing it this is in fact made out of duct but isn't a duct it's actually a plenum so we're just going to we're just going to pressurize it um, we've got some lovely videos of duct sock showing how the duct sock expands uh, demonstrating static degree game excellently well so have a look for those so there's our duct we're marrying this so this is where we got to work out where we drop down forget all that we just do 250 mil and that's it okay now in this case We've got 25 ducts, uh, 25 mini ducts, because we said earlier we, 25 is a good base number. Um, there's times when we'll design it a little bit more, a little bit less, but here let's stick with 25 for simplicity. And we're going to bring each one of these to the linear grill. Okay, 25 times, that's it. Okay, that's, that's our job. That's pretty much it. Um, we can put a return air duct on here if you wish. This is obviously above a perforated ceiling, um, using the ceiling void as a plan. But if you want to, we, we can put a return air duct on here. We can have a return air grill if we want. Sizes of those are, are in the design manual, but it's 405 mil. That's what we use on a uh, send attenuated flexible return air duct. Okay, so that now marries this. How quickly did you do that design? What happens if somebody comes along and says, do you know what, Joe, we can't put the air handler there. We're going to have to put it there. And we say, no problem. Let's do that, but we still want to use this linear grill, so we're just going to bring a duct from here. Okay, and that's it. That's our change. Job done. No problem. If they say we want to use a linear grill, linear uh, linear bar grill here, no problem. We just change where the mini duct is. Put a line through that and bring the mini duct here. Okay. If somebody says, well actually, we have a little office here, and we've got a couple of little offices now, and we want to uh, give them individual room control, because maybe you've gone from a Cat A design to a Cat B design, and okay, that's fine, we don't need to drop fan coils out of the ceiling and take out refrigerant or chilled water or whatever and put in different size fan coils. We can simply put a branch on here, and a branch on here, maybe we put a damper valve here, a damper valve there, and maybe we put a damper valve there, and now you've got three zone controls and these have got their own mini ducts okay servicing servicing that room and servicing this room it's very very easy um it's frighteningly easy uh sometimes people are looking for more constraints but here really you've got so much flexibility uh it's just going to make the life so much easier okay so that's the basis of designing a high velocity system i hope you found that of use and of interest uh, this is Joe Flanagan from the Ingenious Air Company, just trying to help you make the right decisions about the air conditioning systems that you're designing.